in a cemetery, and I think I've seen this in the Church of the Bones, the Capuchin Church in Rome too, was a, a, a striking uh, couplet. So on this tombstone, remember man as you walk by, as you are now, so once was I. As I am now, so shall you be. Remember this and follow me. And then there's a graffiti written in addition to this couplet. And it says, to follow you, I'll not consent until I know which way you went. <laughs> so, <laughs> Friends, this great campaign of Lent has two major components. The first one stretches from Ash Wednesday all the way to Saturday of the third week of Lent. And then the second half focuses on the mystery of our Lord Jesus Christ and the encounter with him that leads to a life lived for others in the hope of the resurrection. But the dominant theme for the first half, which we're still in, uh, running throughout this, uh, this portion of Lent, is a call to a life of gospel conversion, of prayer, of fasting and almsgiving, of mutual forgiveness, of facing one's uh, hardness of heart, of forgiveness of enemies, of mortality, and of the urgency of reforming one's life with the help of God's grace. At times, the word of God shocks us awake. Today, we hear a parable actually of two rich people. One is nameless, living for himself, dining sumptuously, dressing in fine linen, blithely ignoring the suffering poor man Lazarus at his door. The other rich man is Abraham, who welcomes the poor man into his bosom in eternity. Abraham, who on earth was very wealthy, had many servants and animals and possessions. Abraham shared his wealth with others. When three sta strangers appeared in his midst, he treated them royally. He had meals prepared for them and he dined with them as he would with cherished family members. Some believe that he was actually welcoming the triune God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in those three strangers. For this and his obedience, he was made fruitful, so much so that we today can be called sons and daughters of Abraham. Generous in sharing his goods, Abraham is truly greatly blessed. The selfish rich man, blind to the needs of others, is not even remembered by name, and he suffers eternal torment. The lesson is clear. It is not riches that are condemned, but their use for selfish purposes alone. And finally, the rich man in torment begs to have Lazarus dip the tip of his finger in cool water to come and give a moment of relief to soothe his tongue for he is in torment in these flames. He uses words that Jesus himself uses when right after healing, he says, if it is by the finger of God that I heal. So the finger of God was seen as the working of the Holy Spirit. Think of the creation of Adam by God in the Sistine Chapel, God reaching out and touching the finger of Adam and bringing him to life. May the finger of God bring conversion, healing, and new life to all of us and our families this Holy Lent of 2020.